Hello, welcome to another Tweedy Pubs video. Today I am in Greenwich. And I'd like to say a quick thank you to Chris from the comments section for suggesting this neck of the woods. I have been here before, so I'm familiar with a few of these pubs already, but I think I'll probably be finding some new places as well. First up, the Prince of Greenwich. Turns out they don't open until 1 p.m., so I'm gonna have to come back later. So here we have the uh, the plume of feathers. There is, of course, a guy sanding his garage door in the background. There always is. It may well date back to the 1690. 1691 is the date on their website, and that would make it probably Greenwich's oldest pub. There is a collection of maritime memorabilia, knickknacks on the wall, and some um, Churchill-related memorabilia as well. Winston Churchill various places on the interior. Nice old-fashioned interior, carpet, uh, bonquette seating, <laughs> struggling with that word again, banquet, bonquette. Horse brasses, that sort of thing, there's a fireplace, it's nice and cosy and old-fashioned. Harvey's, Sussex Best on tap. Um, I don't think another pub in Greenwich is likely to offer something better than this for me personally. The name Plume of Feathers is usually either a reference to the Black Prince, who was the son of Edward III, who died before he could ever succeed to the throne, or usually it's uh, a reference to the Prince of Wales. And I think in the case of this pub, it's probably the latter, because it was formally named the Prince of Wales back in the early 1700s. Interesting to postulate which Prince of Wales that might have been referring to, given the uh, the first known mention of this pub as the Prince of Wales was in the 1710s. There was a gap in the Princes of Wales around that period of history between 1688 and 1714. We went from one of the Jameses to one of the Georges. There is a pub cat who I got a very brief glimpse of whilst going through the front door and stared at me in a wonderfully grumpy way. What are you doing here? But then um, there are two dogs in the pub sadly today and I don't think the, um, the cat wants to hang around <laughs> to enjoy their company particularly so it quickly made itself scarce jumped over the bar and went upstairs apparently Is that it? bit of a curveball here and I'm not sure we're in Greenwich anymore Toto this is the Anchor and Hope in Carlton? Um, I'm not sure what this part of London is called. Just beyond the borders of Greenwich, a uh, friend suggested this as an uh, alternative riverside pub that may be a bit under the radar. It's got a, some very nice views of the Thames, and there is uh, an original trailer selling cockles and mussels alive alive oh, just to the side, so a definite sort of um, East London sort of, uh, I don't can we can we say Cockney here? I don't know, vibe of that sort of ilk. Date that accurately or? Uh, it, it's mid 2010s, yeah. dubstep. Some nautical regalia, memorabilia, knickknacks. Crap hanging on the walls inside, a sort of maritime theme. Um, it is a bit of a trek from Greenwich though. We took the train from Mays Hill, that end of Greenwich, over to whatever this nearest station was called. I'll put it on the screen if I can remember. I don't know why I found that funny. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, you're right. Well done, thank you. The Pilot Inn. We, this seems to have turned into a bit of um, a, a long walking tour with that detour to the Anchor and Hope over there in that part of London to the east of Greenwich. I still can't remember the name of. And. Uh, to get back into Greenwich to do the rest of the pubs, we're going by way of this, this pub here in the Pilot Inn. It's in a, in my opinion, pretty miserable part of London that's sort of filled with these very new, rather soulless developments. But I think this is a, I don't know the history, but I think this is a somewhat venerable pub, at least compared to its immediate neighbours. Uh, there's this plaque over there saying 1801, I don't know the uh, background there, but... Um, at least one little old doorway that suggests more knickknacks on the interior than I actually saw inside. It's a Fuller's pub today, standard Fuller's. I often say standard Fuller's lineup on the bar. It means London Pride plus some other stuff I'm probably not interested in. Uh, it may not be a completely standard lineup, perhaps that's being unfair, but um, yeah, very much feels like a, a Fuller's pub. A little bit, a little bit bland on the inside, if I'm honest, a bit soulless, but um, probably somewhat fits with the um, immediate vicinity, I'm afraid.
the entrance to the Blackwall Tunnel. With this funny grid in the way. Right there, almost, almost but not quite. I don't really know how we got here, but we, um, I think partly because of that long detour to go to the Anchor and Hope, and then the pilot in whatever those sort of uh, eastern extremes of beyond Greenwich were called. We needed to then do a walk in order to get back to actual Greenwich, and that's taken us along the Thames. And we're at some sort of hipster craft beer brewery type place, but we were dying of thirst and hunger, and they had a sort of pizza shack thing offering pizza and uh, I really wanted a pizza and so you know here we are behind enemy lines in um, a, a factory that I presume makes almost exclusively grapefruit flavoured beer. I went for the Pilsner thinking it would be sort of safe territory and hopefully not particularly Cascade Citra hops uh, grapefruit flavoured nonsense. It still does taste a bit of grapefruit, of course. <laughs> yeah, the, the Pilsner here, perhaps not to my taste, but um, had a tiny sample of this uh, chocolate cherry imperial stout. It comes in at a heady 11% ABV. They serve it in thirds very uh, considerately, and I think that's absolutely delicious. Let's look at this collection of Bromptons. I feel like there ought to be a collective noun for Bromptons. What's the collective noun for Brompton? <laughs> uh, um, uh, a, flock? a flock? I don't know, a herd? <laughs> Cheers from the Cutty Sark. I'm, I'm sure I've seen previous photos of this where the frontage had 1795 rather than 1695 so they've um, tried to upgrade this uh, a bit in terms of venerability. I think the uh, reading around on the web, the sources that I saw dated it to possibly late 1700s possibly early 1800s and that's backed up by the historic England assessment. It was previously called the Union Tavern and prior to that called the Green Man and the name change to the Cutty Sark coincided with the arrival of the boat of that name in the 1950s, I think it was 1951. So it's interesting that this is a pub which is named after a boat, which is in turn named after an item of clothing. First of all, let's deal with the boat. Considered the pinnacle of tea clippers, it was the fastest boat of its age, built in the 1860s, and as we said earlier, it moved to dry dock in Greenwich in the 1950s. The name Cutty Sark of the boat uh, actually stems from a, a Robert Burns poem, Tam o Shanter, which uh, is a poem about, or at least incorporates, a witch, uh, and the witch wore a short shirt. Uh, Cutty Sark is in fact Scots dialect. Uh, Cutty means short, Sark means shirt. So bizarrely we have this pub named after a boat, named after an item of clothing in the Scots dialect somehow down here in Greenwich. Just a bit of a shame, it's uh, a Young's pub. I so just, just really struggle with Young's beer. But there you go. Nice location, lovely views. It's definitely on the tourist trail, it's a little bit overrun in a way that the Plume of Feathers, for example, earlier definitely was not. Passing by the Trafalgar Tavern, which is very much on the tourist trail here in Greenwich, and uh, you know, the building is grand and impressive, but the interior I've always found sort of rather banal and soulless so I, th I think we're going to skip this one and just uh, just just carry on to the next hopefully slightly more characterful pub. Ooh, dangerous steps descend at your own risk sounds like my sort of thing and these very slippy shoes I've got on at the moment. Very nice I do like the Thames for sure. Okay I believe I am now nearing the end of the tour and have finally got back to the Prince of Greenwich, formerly known as the Prince Albert, 
In 2015, this pub was taken over by a Sicilian-born landlord, uh, Pietro La Rossa, and <laughs> wonderfully, that's actually a picture of him up there on the sign. A fascinatingly knick-knack, curio-filled pub interior, so uh, let's go take a look at what that's like. it for today it's um but went in a bit of a strange direction um i have a friend who lives nearby who joined me for the day and suggested a couple of pubs slightly outside of greenwich which kind of complicated the proceedings a bit so uh the hope and anchor and the pilot were a little bit out of the bounds of what you'd classically call greenwich interesting mixed bag nice pleasant walk along the river and all that nonetheless i would say for me the pub of the day almost certainly the plume of feathers I and mean, it had this sort of nice cozy old world pub feel nice stuff behind the bar good beer uh, nice interior good bit of history relatively old uh, so that would be if, if, if i had to pick a single pub in greenwich i would say go there anyway thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one bye bye